Altland can sense if we get one more, we can put maybe a nail in the coffin of the Dingoes. And that's exactly what they may have done here in the first half. Still a long way to go. It's funny how dreams manifest and the gains that come with them. Nevertheless, Tommy, as a shot on goal, hard up against the boundary in front of the very popular Cooper's tent. Yeah, pressure, pressure, pressure. Jack O'Dell down there was doing a really, really good job of clearing. They just could not get it out and over the next line, and it finally came back in. They got the shot they needed. All right. Comments there from the master coach and Tommy Ellis. Four goals, 226 on the Cooper scoreboard. Uh, two goals straight. The Dingoes way over double the score. Portland now just raising up the tempo. Out the side door I go, and I'll let this one ride and slide to the forward line. Mark there by the number 63 from the Dingoes. Went the punch the first time, but clever enough to reel it in. 63 being Thomas Rowe, and he has stood form. Rowe, Rowe, Rowe it to the side. Dingo's now assessing the option. Okay, folks, this is it. Over the top, a leaping lizard in the air. The number eight, if you will, is Zachary McKinney. McKinney trying to keep it alive. Time is ticking down. They know they need one before the half. Players around the ball. 13, Dallas. Salcedo. Portland rob it like a thief in the night. Portland have it. 41 now. Towards centre half forward. Man free. Trying to get more freedom on the outside. Decides to take them on. Cop one very high indeed. The number 13. And Portland, again, a chance. I spoke about this, Tom, a bit earlier. The last couple of minutes, the last couple of minutes of the half where the game can be won and lost. And Portland have just been able to maintain their structure and their intensity it's, and their goal kicking in this period. It's good what he's doing right here. They're coming down to the end. They're going to get the win in the next half. Waste a little time here. Go ahead and get a shot on goal. Waste a little more time so you get the win in the next half. Comments from the master coach. And he had us all blindsided all of us there. Did it very well. The number 52 didn't blindside Tommy. Portland 52, and that's Austin Flintz. How good was that though? You saw Zachary McKinney, an American, yeah. taking a mark over Martin. That was that was really nice. That's to where see. it's at. That's where the development is, and this is where the action is with Portland. Can they be a part of the goal kicking action? They can on the scoreboard. Coopers. And in that red zone, if you will, just before halftime, they now move to 32. Uh, the Dingoes are 12, Tommy. So we're a countdown to halftime at the moment. The Dingoes, not halftime yet. We've got some time to go. But no doubt the Dingoes will be regrouping pretty soon. Tom, and what are some of the things that you've said to your charges, whether it be in Denver or with the U.S. footy boys when in this position? Yeah, you, you get that all the time. It's, it's the hardest game to play. So at this point, you've got to stay positive and just man up. This is where you get man on man and you got to beat your man. Portland sensing, sensing that they can sense blood. They can sense that this could be a game which is going to put them back, back in the action because Baltimore did beat them earlier. We saw the way that Baltimore played just before us. What Portland are saying is that we can play every bit as good as that. The Dingoes, though, will not be beaten. It becomes a time where every man must fight, but the boundary umpire said it's over and out, and we'll have a boundary throw in. How good is that to see an American doing that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. Half time here at the football. Hands together, ladies and gentlemen. A real humdinger, as we like to say. Deep, deep into the day here on day one. USAFL Nationals to score. The Portland Steelheads, five goals, 232. Tommy, uh, to the Dallas Dingoes, who are 12. A couple of comments to get us out of here. Well, first, I'd just like to see Mergs over on the sideline running. There's a guy that knew how to play. I'd like to get him back on that coaching group. Very true, and still looks every bit as fit. Real wholesome country boy there, and uh, contributed at the skills contest there last night, but uh, part of the fabric of uh, the development. And... Uh, a man who was, uh, look at the size of the man. You played, used to play him where, Tommy, when you played with him with the Revolution? Where did he used to line up with you? Actually, I never got to play with him yep. or against him on the Revs. He, he was gone by the time I get there. But, but he's more centre-half back, and we've seen some yeah. good games by him in the centre-half back there for yeah. the freeze. And the games that they have won in divisional championships, a, lo a lot has revolved around Brent Mergen, oh, rock absolutely. solid at centre-half back. It all starts in the back with him. He yep. reads the ball like nobody else. It's one of those guys that came out of Perth with the... Uh, he uh, did. Tony, he you did. Know, yeah. Tony, you've got to love what Tony did for the league. It's been really, really good. Well, that's right. There was an ex there's all these different exchange programs in place now. You can get to Australia by very uh, different avenues. We'll talk about that when we get back because we've really got to get out of here. But we'll talk about the Tony Fairhead exchange program when we get back. All right, have a bit of a rest, mate, and we'll see you on the flip side.
right, folks. Here we go to begin with the finish to end this Saturday. And what a great day it's been. Portland finished off that uh, quarter very strongly. And they jump out of the gate once again. They got a pretty good lead at this stage. We'll get to that. Portland sets sail. And with Tommy Ellis, ball out of bounds, out of sight as we pick it on up. Second half action. Cooper's scoreboard. Portland 5 2 32. Dallas Dingo's uh, two straight 12. Straight out of the middle with Marty. That looked really good. Dallas comments from Tommy Ellis. Out of sight. Good mark considering that he had to cope with an early ride from the Dallas Dingo. Was the Portland player. Still a lot of spring in their step. That's Marty again. Marty again, full forward. Two on one situation. Dingo's battered away. And it sails away out of bounds. And it sails away out of bounds. Thanks, Chris. All right. One point to Portland. Coopers, 5 2. Thanks, Chris. Dallas Dingo's two goals. Kick going the way of Portland. 5-5 five, five for Portland there is uh, Chris Ince. Ince and Jex deep into the forward line. Dallas. Dallas. Get it out of there. Portland got the outriders. 41-4-1. Steelhead. Shot on goal. Peters. Don't tell me he has. He has. Like a fox on the run. Foxy. Fancy off the boot. Another one there to the Steelheads. Built of steel, uh, Portland at the moment. Good fabric. Six goals, three they are to the Dallas Dingoes. Two, two straight kicks. So 39 plays 12, Tom. Yeah, it's uh, not, the, not the start Dallas wanted right there. Jack is doing a really good job back there with the pressure. Um, they just haven't been able to link up after that. After the, he stopped the ball, he gets it out, and they just haven't been able to link up over that. Back in the middle, back again. Up we rise. Portland. Dallas haven't exactly jumped out, but they were slow starters in the last half. They try and start something now. Probably about two minutes gone in the first half. Good tackle by the Dingoes. This will be interesting. Holding the ball. Dingoes, number six, Benjamin Moffat. Probably a little too far out. Who knows? Haven't seen him kick before, but he knows that. Yeah, it was always coming, the short kick, but uh, undercutting the route with Portland. They were awake to the sortie forward. Portland, 75, is right, right. You're right to the outer side. Dingoes go back in, duck their head. Kind of like to hoop out of the tackle, if you will. Up the line, good mark in front of the Cooper's tent where it's flowing. Showing it to us as the number 61 for the Dingoes, unlisted. A handball's inboard on the edge still. Bootleg around, send it long, strong, forward line. Oh, Ooh. Dingo went the mark when it was on its way. Oh, he Knows the misdemeanor that he made and only a point to Dallas. So two goals, one, 6-3, Tommy. He'll be owing a beer at the end of the day at that one. Everybody. Portland now playing the possession game out of fullback. Portland in a land of the free, free ball. Who can get the free bird before it goes out? No, I can't. But the boundary umpire can toss in. I think Seattle would be happy with that right now. Get another ball up, get these guys structured. Portland for mine. Just being able to step up when the heat is on and strong towards the forward of the space. Good kick. Because if you kick to open space at times, I'll guarantee a forward will get there. Well, oftentimes a defender will be thinking, where are they coming from? That was a pretty good kick there. I like the strategy by the number 55 there in Chris Ince, looking for open spaces. Spin in, 5-3 for Portland. And that's Anderson. 1-5 for Portland. And that was Oakley. Oakley, a goal kicker earlier. Number seven for Portland sends it on its way. And Coventry, Martin... The rock soul of the club off to the right-hand side for a major. The soul of the club there, Martin Coventry. If you have not played against Martin Coventry ever, you haven't been playing. All right, I'll feel a lot safer up here in the scoreboard. Martin's been around like snake oil for a long, long time. He's a healer of the club. Here we go, Dallas Dingoes. 
Out we go. Couldn't connect. Yes, I can. Ground level and speed is what we need. I've got the speed. Running from the devil in the morning sun. Didn't see the Portland tackle, Tommy. Holy and like smokes. That. What a great tackle <laughs> by the Portland Steelhead. Austin Brooks, not the biggest of guys, but a real big heart. Great tackle, young man. Tackle of the day, if there was one. Cooper's fashion. Still in it. Good talk, too. The number four you saw, that man's name, uh, number four was Austin Brooks. And those sort of things, particularly coming from a smaller bloke, can drive your side oh. to higher levels, Tommy. Yeah, that, he, he didn't see, I see that coming at all. It was a, it was a, a clean tackle. Um, just that was a tough one. Coventry again sends it down. And uh, over and out. So Portland now saying, well, you've got to bring it to us, Dallas Dingoes, and uh, see how they're maintaining their structures going into this uh, throw-in, Tom. All players there moving as one, not all hemmed in under the ball. They've got an even spread around the pack and cutting through, creating the space off the tap. Number two for Portland. Dingoes out of defence. 4 7, you can see for Portland is Calms. Calms has it. You can hear the voices. Not inside his head, but in the forward line. Pops it over. A good measured kick. Well measured. 5 3, Portland. Eric Anderson again. Anderson, your man again, yep. Tommy. Oh, delicious yeah. delivery by Anderson, Tommy. Yeah. Brilliant. He, he's really putting a stamp on it. As a coach, how do you tell that guy you're not going to make a cup? Wow, 5-2. And it's not like he had a margin of error there to deal with. He really had to put that in a slot. You know, having that background as a, as a goalie for soccer, I oh, think yeah. you can see that in his play. Yeah, very true. 5-2. Right now, it's coming down to the end of the of the day. Yeah. This is when you got to have that gut check. Everybody's starting to get tired. You yeah. can see it. Um, it's been a long day. Um, we'll see how this goes. But the dingoes, you could just see you could just see that taking it there out of them. Yeah, and Portland, you can see that they're very much in it. The Steelheads, and uh, we gave you their their rundown before. And you know they've not been, as I said, they're a bit hurt. Maybe a little chip on the shoulder after the first game loss, and it's probably driven them to a higher level. But even though they've got this game still in the bag, they still know that percentage can play its part, and they're not really putting the uh, the, the, the metal or the pedal off the metal at this stage. Yeah, that's the very first tiebreaker, I believe, is, is yep. uh, percentage. So you got to keep rolling. Oh, rising above me, the Ruckman there, and handballing out and slinging it away to that man there, the number four there, and Jay Duncan at ground level. Needs a bit of help from his friend there, and Duncan goes back and forward. Dallas, Dallas a chance. It's wide, one-on-one -on -one contest. Fist of Fury, no misses everybody, except the boundary and over and out towards the tournament tent where the merchandise is still flowing out of that. One or two lines have been sold out, but if you like what you see and it's not there, you can place your order. Really great. Great designs this year too. I don't think the beanies are selling out like they not did last the year. Seven layers perhaps. Not quite like Colorado, but not far behind it, Tommy. Anyway, tackle. Yes, I'm trying to get rid of it, uh, Mr. Umpire. As I see that, give it to me. And I do what I do, my patriotic chore to the air. Portland, Dingoes, Dingoes, clear, present, possession, again, through the pack, no, yes, no, umpire comes in, so let's do it all again. Now, Tommy, um, your Mike Anderson, is he already on the list? He's one of the guys we're looking at. Looking at yep. at this stage, yep. all right. And how big is your list, Tom? Um, we had about 65 guys come to our camp. And, and people we're looking at. So it's about 65 at this point, and we'll, we'll narrow it down to 35 at the end of the weekend. As we start to bring it down now, late in the day on a Saturday, there's a free kick to the Dingoes, in fact. No, it's going to, yes it is. Have a shot on goal, sir. So Dingoes do have it in front of the tent. It's going to be a left to right from there. Is he a right or left footer? Here he comes on the right. Angle should open up. Smashed away. Fist of fury by Portland. Still got a lot of zing in the legs at Portland. 4-3 for the Steelers is Dennis. Dennis the left half back flank. 4-4 four, four going back in the more Kutten. Good use of the body to check that player out. Dallas Spinorama to the deck, the beautiful green pastures of uh, Lakewood Ranch. Again, skills now dropping a little, the tiredness coming into it, the pinball effect like I like to call it. Just can't get out of it at the moment. And they jump on it again and leave it up to the umpire. Tired bodies, Tommy. Yeah, it's coming down to this. I mean, you see uh, 
Dallas has got a wall built right there trying to keep the ball inside. Uh -huh, I, see. I think Seattle or uh, Portland is just happy to have it where it is right now. Let the time keep running. They've got a good lead. And here they go. Couldn't quite get a good tackle by Dallas. Able to go back and so soccer it forward. Portland lucky to get out of that. We'll hold up. Now I'll get away. I just got to get away. I just got to fly away in Lenny Kravitz fashion because down the line, I've got a player on time, right on time, and that's a number 36 for Portland, and that is Scott Wagner. And it was another really, really good delivery by Eric Anderson again. Yep. Really staking his claim to get on that Boeing with you to Melbourne or wherever it is in Australia, but we're here at Lakewood Ranch, Sarasota, and Portland had another one. A nail to the coffin there of the Dingoes there, Portland. Uh, Portland now uh, eight goals, four. Dingoes, two goals, one. And Anderson, he knows you're here, Tommy. And he's going to make it very, very hard for you to leave him off the list. Yeah, it's been some impressive kicks down coming in um, to, to, for delivery. That's, you know, that's one of the hardest things for the Americans, is delivering the ball down that forward line. And uh, not only delivering once, twice, but consistently. Yeah, he's been doing it consistently all day. All right, back in the middle. Counting it down Saturday. What a great day. A good day. Like a G with an O, O with a D, T with an I, M and an E. Hope you're having a good time. It's going to be a real good time in the Cooper's Tent tomorrow. Come at the finals on ESPN3. You with Go Live Sports cast at the moment as they cast it towards half foot. Good trap by the leg by that man there in Jay Duncan who gave a bone crunching. Put a real Jones in the bones of the Dallas players, Duncan. He'd only be about maybe, I don't know, uh, probably about 60 kilo ring and wet, but committed his body and soul that the Portland players do have. Body and soul. Soul man to the forward line. No soul. Dingo down there. Got support. Back of the pack. 6-3. He was good early too in defense. Thomas Rowe liked his game. Back to Portland, good tackle. Got to be holding the ball. Never say die attitude there. And the Dallas Dingoes towards the middle. Space. Two on one. Portland have the numbers. Good body used by the 55 by the Dingoes though. Unlisted. Spin around. That man, Duncan. Duncan gives it all his loving towards the full forward region. Dallas, two on one situation. 2-2 two, two for the Dingoes. Dingoes, 2-2 two, two was base or bass. Left half back flank, that 63 again for the Dingoes was Rowe. Portland, long, no one home, wide and over and out. Just happy to get it down there and build the wall, Tommy. Yeah, you can see guys are starting to struggle a little bit with their legs. Yeah. Um, still, though, they're going really, really hard at this ball at the end of this game. It's not like the Dingoes have quit. No, not at all. No way in the wall. And we've seen that right through, too. And that's the way you play footy. Or anything in life, you go towards the end. You never know what happens. It's a mystery. Not a mystery here at the moment with Portland. Really staking their claim against, uh, for Baltimore. Really, if I try and think of these two sides, as I saw the other side before at Baltimore I'm talking about. Cramps. God, if one of these two sides miss out and someone's got to miss out going forth, it'll be heartbreak for the other because they've been pulled uh, to each other. This is what you were talking about, Tommy. The cramps that do set in. So we'll probably hold up the play, which is good. One of these buddies come along to relieve it. We don't. We play on. They've got a man on the other side. 45, you can see, is Harding. Harding. Hard up against the boundary. Chopped off at the pass. 44, Portland. Play on. Player all alone. There for Portland. Sends it downtown. And a good mark by 3-6. 36 for Portland. I believe is Wagner. Wagner looking. Not down. He's looking down the barrel. He's 45 at the moment. Eight goals, 4-42. Is his aim true? On its way, umpire has not moved. Like Clyde, he has not moved an inch. Six more goal. to Portland. Yes, another one, Tommy. And suddenly they have nine goals raked up. Nine goals, four, making that uh, 58 to two goals, one Dallas, who are 13. Yeah, at this point, Portland's putting themselves in a position that if there is a mistake made tomorrow, they're yep. still in it. Exactly. So putting all the, perceived, all the perceived pressure they can put on Baltimore, who have to... Get to bed tonight thinking that uh, if they drop tomorrow, uh, Portland have got percentage on the scoreboard. So an uneasy rest for the Baltimore Dockers tonight. Have that on their minds. Still, their minds only for the football. Their eyes only Dallas Dingoes. Ruck. Win that contest. Got to keep on keeping on through the 
pack. Bulldozing. Portland. Escape. Take a bounce. Good bounce. Come off back to him. And way on down. Dallas in front. Take the mark. As we start now to bring it down on this Saturday. Saturday. October the 12th, I think it is, Tommy's. 23rd edition of the US AFL Nationals. And another cramp on the outer side, Tom. Just starting to set in. Which is always a good sign that your players have given you everything, Tommy. Yeah, and they probably the next year need to get a little more fit. Fitness there. If you need a fitness program, get in contact with Tommy Ellis. He has uh, some of the best with his liaisons with colleges around America. And being a man who's been involved also with football in this land, American football, for a very long time, that's his heritage too. And to the big man we go, to the dance floor, in fact, the number 36 again, Portland, is Scott Wagner, another one of their power forwards. They do have big bodies too, power forwards in the forward line with a paid load. Going to load up, load up this leather, leather bullet. Is his aim going to be true with his 45? No, off to the right-hand side and through for a minor. Minor score. That is two go nine goals, five, leading Dallas two goals, one Tommy. It's, it's a, this is the long day, right? This is the very end of the day. <laughs> this is when guys are really starting to cramp. You see it. I think it's smart, Dallas, right now. Take your time. There's no rush to be kicking in. Let you guys kind of rest. Very different complexion tomorrow at this time. We'll just be coming off a D1 final. And finals in every division before that, you've really got to come down and experience the hype, particularly around the Cooper's tent. It really does hit the roof, if you will. Portland here, now the middle. It's all elementary, my dear Watson, but can we get something before it ends? No. Errant kicks, errant skills, tired legs. Two down with cramp already. Not with Portland, though. 5-3 for Portland. They've got the fitness. Eric Anderson, your man again. Let's look at the delivery. Long, probably a bit too long on that occasion, but the good thing I liked about that, he got to his feet and went quickly, Tom. Now it's quickly to the other side for Dallas. Dallas have it. Backline. Here he comes Center again. Line. Erickson. He's had a lot of touches. He had today. a slide across and got a turn of pace, Tom. Look at that. Turns his soul around, hits the, her, the red dirt road. Couldn't quite find his mark, but this time was in the general direction and over and out. Big guy got a turn of pace. Yeah, he, he's been up and down all over the place. And it's not like he's a small guy. He's six, I think he's about 6'2, six, 6'3. Six, With genuine speed off the mark, Tom. Yes. Tap down. Dingoes just got to hang in there. Haul towards center half back. It spells danger for them. There's your man again, Anderson. Shot on goal. What's he done? Done exact. Oh, just touched on the end. Ooh. It was on target. That's the horn. Is it Al? Oh, no, they called a goal. The field. They did call a goal. He did call a goal. So Anderson has scored a goal. So he's missed. He made up for his uh, errant kick towards the pocket yeah. there. And uh, there's a great. Uh, president used to say jfk a mistake only becomes an error if you fail to correct it and erickson did that right before your eyes there tommy yeah that was a that was an excellent he's as good in the air as he is off the ground at that height we talked about him a lot today I, it's, it's, i'm excited 10 goals 5 65 2 1 13 erickson probably close to best on ground and again not only staking the claim personally up portland to put the pressure on the baltimore dockers but erickson Staking his claim with the man who's standing alongside me and Tommy Ellis, the U.S. Revolution coach. Portland being good on the ruck. The dingo, you can see, 45 is Harding. We've got a spare man in defence, the dingoes. Portland player, lefties player to exert pressure. 4-7 dingoes is uh, Nicholas Mailer. And Mailer, like the U.S. male, towards the side. Made his delivery, but over and out. The U.S. mail has just got to go through the pack like that. Take a bounce like the Jets. Jettison. Full forward region. Portland with the defensive answers. Dingo still on the run. Dodging. Weaving. Reeling it in. Handballing. Portland on the scene. Fitness is better. Chopped off there by the Dingo. Did it go the distance? It did. Takes the mark. Looking for a lead. Decides to go long. Big bomb they rise good yeah, mark it is good mark down here very good mark set play there too top of the square can work did on that occasion number four for the dallas dingoes is well listed as jay duncan i think it is is that jay jay shot on goal made no mistake brings up his third to the dingoes never say die attitude three goals one that's 19 portland 10 5 65 tommy as we are now 
in the dusk of this match. Yeah, it's good for Dallas to get that at the end. They, they need some positive things to end at this game, so tomorrow they get out here and, and, and put one more together. Yeah, no doubt they will. Be sure to get home safely tonight, particularly if you've been in the Cooper's tent for a couple. The big Ruckman revs it up, lets it rip by here. A horn wailing across the green pastures wow. of Cooper's field. That one belongs to us. And this match belonged to the Portland Steelheads. Dropped their first match of the day, but bounced back. If you want to see a fighter, watch him when he's on the ropes. Portland Steelheads, 10 goals, 565. Did it with a, a payload of scoring two. Percentage like Tommy said. If there is a blemish tomorrow by Baltimore, the percentage will be right there behind them. To the Dallas Dingoes, three goals, 119. Tommy the tail of the two sides. Yeah, I really like seeing the Americans on both sides playing well. Um, that, that's what I look for. That's you know, your job, that's, that's, that's what your I portfolio. So that, that's so, where I go, so, and both of them had really good yeah. Americans playing. And Erickson probably uh, the pick of the crop there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number 44 for them, uh, Javon, he looks really good. For Dallas, you've got um, uh, Zachary McKinney, number eight. He did really, really well. Jack, uh, Jack Odell, number seven, played really solid in defense. He had a lot of work to do back there today. He, you know, he put in the hard work. That guy should be getting a beer. And we get the wind up from the boys there from Go Live Sports Cast. And uh, thank you very much, fellas, to the uh, right and left of me, Nate and I forgot your name, good buddy, Alan. Alan. Thanks, brother. You've been here all day. I remember you from last time, right? Yeah, yeah of course. And we'll be seeing you guys again tomorrow, 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll go live sportscast. will take us through to the finals, and they're going to be the carriers too for what's going to be distributed to ESPN3. And, Tommy, you'll be on board for that as well with special comments. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that grand final. Oh, well, as the sun is uh, very much set over in the west here for the day, this here is the Grillo with Tommy Ellis about to bid you a fine farewell from Lakewood Ranch at the Premier Sports Campus in the Bradenton area. Brought to you also by the Bradenton Area Sports Commission and visit Sarasota, beaches and beyond. Be careful, like I said, in the Cooper's tent, be sure you get yourself a Uber or whoever else the carriers are here in the States, get yourself home. Get well hydrated, eat well, love you, talk to you all in the morning. We'll be back at 9 o'clock for the very important round three matches, which will just determine who goes through to the divisional championship finals. That's all she wrote. See you tomorrow.